What's the crack? Welcome to today's episode. My name is David Kelly, I'm the Irish Guy Vlogs, and today is the third and final interview from the Marquee by the Sea Music Festival. Today it's with Liam Geddes. So Liam won the Voice of Ireland a few years back, and since then he's been gigging around Ireland and Europe, and I think around the world. He said he sold out gigs in Boston and stuff like that. But while I was hanging around for, for him to start and for other bands to start, I was chatting him for a good bit, and he was such a nice guy, and his friend Gavin as well, who was there. You know, they both work really hard to do what they love, and I, I just I had to admire him for that, you know? You're gonna have to forgive me as well. My nose is kind of blocked up and my throat is a little bit sore I've just been feeling a bit just been feeling a bit rough since yesterday probably like some kind of bug or something I don't know but onwards before the interview I need to apologize for the sound there was people in the background making noise they were working at the bar and stuff like that and I couldn't really do anything about it so this is the full interview with Liam Geddes Marquee by the Sea 2019 hope you enjoy so I'm here with Liam Geddes and Liam's playing tonight uh, at Marquee by the Sea so are you excited about the game? Yeah, yeah, can't wait. Yeah, 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 I've never played here before, so yeah. Oh, really? Crack, yeah. So you were saying earlier you're from Ballina, but have, have, like, have you travelled up and down the West Coast much? Yeah, well, gig, gig wise, yeah. I've, so I've done a gig in Galway the odd time. I just recently did a gig at home uh, for the Ballina Street Festival. It was my first time actually gigging in my hometown and. 10 years or something so it was great yeah. and then I finished up my Irish tour uh, well it wasn't really an Irish tour it was a, just a tour in general um, and I finished that up in Galway there a few weeks ago so yeah I was re recently enough so but I've never been this far up so did you get a nice welcome home kind of vibe when you went when you played in Dublin uh, yeah well I was away so long there was a lot of faces there I hadn't seen before which was interesting um, but yeah, no, there was a good few familiar faces there, it was good, yeah. Big welcome home kind of vibe. Yeah, that must be really cool as well to see people that have followed you throughout yeah. the years as well, you know. That's great, we went on a good session then after, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> and um, do you find that your life has changed much since your days of the voice? It, it has in terms of just like experience and, and direction kind of all my music yeah. so I was writing back then but I wasn't really releasing uh, it, it felt like I was releasing music but it was more like online releases stuff like that but um, I've released a lot of music since and I'm writing more and I'm, I'm releasing everything that I'm writing so most of what I release pretty much all of what I release I write on so uh, in terms of that it's yeah it's a lot different did you kind of at the time did you see it as a stepping stone for something else for something bigger yeah you know i guess at the time i didn't really realize but i was still finding what i was all about and kind of what kind of music i really wanted to release i thought i had a good idea of what i, I wanted to do but it wasn't so much of a stepping stone at the time as much as it was just something else to do like another avenue and just something to try and just see where it goes yeah. and i wasn't going to enter the voice actually um it was only like the night that the deadline was I actually entered someone, really? someone talked me into doing it and I got I put my application in at like 5 to 12 like almost midnight oh. um, so yeah it, it ended up being just a, a great I don't want to call it a stepping stone but it was just a great experience yeah. and something different and I learned a lot I'd imagine so yeah. yeah I learned a lot in terms of like maybe how harsh the industry was I knew already it, it was a harsh and tough industry but oh. in terms of that and just meeting people and learning how to you know how to engage with people and how to build relationships with people and stuff. You know? And um, what will be your main influences in music? Right? It's kind of funny. I, re I really listen to everything. So when I started off, I, I was really into it because my parents would be into like crooner music, so like Google and Sinatra, Dean Martin, like that kind of thing, rap pack. And I, I listened a lot to that. And then I got into like Josh Groban, so like some classical pop crossover stuff. Uh, and then I really got into like Coldplay, One Republic, listened to a lot of pop music. And uh, my brother was crazy into U2 and um, Creed and uh, Radiohead, that kind of stuff. A lot of different influences. Exactly, so a, a lot of different influences. And that's probably why it took me a longer time to figure out what style of music I, I was I really into. Yeah. It took me a long time to realize that I was into pop, you know, and that's yeah. the kind of stuff that I wanted to write. Like, yeah. You find it easier to write pop than any other genre? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I haven't really or delved... something that relates to you more? Uh, yeah, I think it's probably because I, I really enjoy it. I like it, so I, I feel like anyone who's writing uh, is going to enjoy, is going to write easier in the genre that they enjoy the most yeah, because it's, it's, it's true to them, you know? So who would be the biggest person you've uh, opened for? Biggest person that I have opened for? Well, I guess the one that meant most, you know, the most. You know, yeah, I'm just trying to think now. Pretty big fan of the Riptide, Riptide movement at the time. And, uh, really good. Do you know what? It probably was walking on cars. Um, at the time, they were really, really big. They were just blowing up at the time. 
and I knew their music and I listened I listened to pretty much every song that they had released. You know, probably the biggest for me was probably Hudson Taylor because they kind of started off where I started off, you know, I busked when they were busking. Yeah. And then, you know, a few weeks later when they had moved to London, I was like, where are the lads? I haven't seen them in a while, you know? <laughs> and then uh, next thing they were all over the place, you know? So it probably was Hudson Taylor, you know? It was just, just an interest in, to see their story, you know? Yeah, but they are really talented and they're... Yeah, yeah. and amazing yeah. live as well. Like their it energy really is, is incredible live. Friend of mine is actually that's this one. Like yeah. She would both be in the and so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're really incredible and lovely, lovely guys as well. Like they're really yeah. down to earth and I think it's because of where they came from. That they came from Buskin, like yeah. a really modest background and uh, I kind of feel like they don't really take anything for granted, you know. And they're still working towards probably what their goals are. Um, in terms of like, whatever they class as success or yeah. whatever numbers they want to hit, but um, you know, I, I think it's probably just because they started off busking that that's why they're so humble. You know. And uh, you're speaking of success. Like, what, what would you consider to be like success? You know, when do you think you this man? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah, just just gigging, like, really, just, just, just gigging just at, at this in Kilkee. Just... Kilkee is where I wanted to be. <laughs> for me, it's it's more so, you know, if you asked me this three or four years ago, I probably would have said, oh, a headline in, you know, Wembley or, yeah. you know, Crow Park, that, that is the thing. But honestly, it's kind of changed for me. Like, I, I just kind of want to be happy and release the music and be happy with the music that I'm releasing. If I have, if I turn up to a gig in London or Dublin or wherever it is, and there's five people at the gig and they know my tunes and it's impacted them not in a cheesy way i don't mean like yeah. you have to have changed their lives but even if it just like cheered them up on a yeah. on a bad day and they're on the way from home from work and they listen to one of my tunes like they know the words that's success to me honestly yeah. so um yeah no like I, I'm, I'm i'm happy right now so like uh, yeah, yeah exactly so if if, uh, if i start selling out bigger gigs and more people discover my music i'm i'm bonus. happy with that it's, it's a bonus you know that's I'm successful in my book, I suppose, you know. But yeah. it's nice with the feeling to be able to just, you know, say, I, I have to do whatever. Yeah, I well, I feel like when you're constantly just reaching for something and you feel like you can't have it, um, and I was that way for a long time, mm. it's hard to keep motivated and want to release music. You know, it's so. hard to, like, get into that creative mindset and write songs that mean something to you when yeah. you're constantly yeah. thinking, oh, will they like it, won't they like it, I want to write things that people are going to like. Whereas now, you know, I took a break from music for a while, and when I came back and started releasing music, it was music that I loved, you know. Um, and I've gotten involved in different, uh, different projects and different aspects of the industry yeah. and like filmmaking and stuff like that. So now that I'm doing that, and that's kind of you know also my job, yeah. uh, I don't have to worry as much as oh my god, if I don't like sell out Pro Park in two years, what am I gonna do? Like how yeah. am I gonna survive? So I don't have that pressure. So I feel like that's a big, big part of why, why I feel like I'm in the sweet spot at the moment. So what's next for you then? Uh, so yeah, I have the Kilkenny Outdoor Music Festival with Hudson Taylor and Paddy Casey next week. So uh, that's next for me and I'm actually releasing a single in September and uh, planning my tour for next year as well. So we'll looking forward yeah. to that. Yeah. Thanks a lot for talking to me today. Anyway. Cheers man, yeah, no worries at all. No worries at all. So that was a little preview of Liam's single that's coming out in September, it's called Crown. And it was a really good song, he played it live and he played a lot of other songs live and he just blasted them out, I was blown away. Like I, I know I'd seen him from The Voice years ago and I thought that he was gonna like start singing Westlife and stuff like that which wouldn't really be my, my kind of music. But he sang Chandelier and like his own song Crown was really really good. I just wanted to put that in because like, cause he was such a nice guy and he was really nice to talk to and I'm kind of rooting for him now you know. So I'm gonna leave a link to his YouTube channel and his Spotify in the description. If you want to check out his music or his YouTube channel, you can. And if, you know, I'm just trying to send a couple of a uh, couple of followers his way because, uh, as I said, he was just such a cool dude. And it's kind of rare that I get to network with creators and stuff like that.
that so it was really nice to meet Liam and it was cool to interview him and because he's into videography and making music videos and things like that you know I think I connected with him on that level as well and he, and he was just really easy to talk to and that's all for me for today I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below I'm gonna be back tomorrow with another video that I'm actually editing at the minute it's a completely random video uh, <laughs> you'll see it tomorrow around four o'clock it's only gonna be short but it's it's kind of me complaining about something but it's kind of funny I think anyway but uh, yeah you'll see me tomorrow anyway at four and uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye.